One day after walking home from school, I stopped at the park along the way, and I started swinging on the swing set. I live in a small town, but it wasn't very common for the park to be completely empty, especially on a nice day like it was. I thought it was odd, but I didn't think too much of it. A short time after swinging, a guy I recognized that I used to talk to on Snapchat from time to time that I kind of had a thing for in the past approached me. His name was Chase. We recognized each other right away, and he sat in the swing set right next to mine. He seemed a little upset and was questioning me about how I blocked him and completely ghosted him. I told him that my mom saw our messages and that she made me block him because of our age gap. I was 14 and he was like 21 or 22 I think. I didn't think much of it at the time, but the older I got, I truly realized how wrong that was and that he was a predator. What if we killed her, he said. He said that completely out of nowhere and it threw me off. I let out a slight laugh as I thought he was joking. I quickly realized he was being dead serious. I asked him if he was crazy and then I told him he needs to get away from me and leave me alone. He started apologizing and telling me how sorry he was and that he was joking. But he wasn't joking though. I could just tell. I started walking home and he followed me. He was getting really angry with me and the more I told him to leave me alone, the more angry he would get. I really didn't want to lead him to my house because if he knew where I lived, well, obviously it just wouldn't be a good thing. Especially because of the way he was talking about my mom. He continued following me all the way back to my neighborhood. We had been walking for 10 minutes or so at this point, and he was just rambling the whole time about how he loves me and how he wanted to be with me. I was trying to be as civil as possible with him and keep my cool so I wouldn't escalate the situation any further. But deep down inside of my soul, I was freaking out and unsure of what to do. I was hoping we would run into someone and furthermore, I would be able to ask them for help. But of course, there was no one out, like at all. I thought that was unusual too, because it was unusual. Usually on a day like this, people are scattered around the park, or walking their dog, you know, or like kids playing in their front yards, or riding their bikes, or hell, I don't know, like football practice would be going on at the nearby middle school that we pass by on our walk or something. But nothing. There was nobody. There were cars that passed by every once in a while, but I was scared they would ignore me into which could then escalate Chase's anger into doing who knows what to me. This man was literally twice my size, and I'm not exaggerating one bit at all. So he could completely manhandle me if he wanted to. Before I turned onto my street, I took my phone halfway out of my pocket and secretly texted my dad as quickly as possible and said EMERGENCY, in all caps. He called me within 20 seconds probably, and I picked up the phone. I started running towards my house and I told him what was going on. Chase started running after me and he grabbed me and pushed me to the ground. My dad ran outside, got in his truck and began searching for me. He found me laying on the ground a few houses down in one of our neighbor's front yard with Chase on top of me. He rushed over to me and practically jumped out of the truck and began beating the literal hell out of Chase. I'm pretty sure he would have killed him if I wasn't there. My dad told me to go home and lock the door and to call mom. My dad kept Chase restrained and one of our neighbors came out and helped by calling the police. They arrested Chase as soon as they got there. They put my dad in cuffs as well until they learned the full story. My dad didn't even end up getting arrested for beating Chase up, because my dad and I told the police officer everything, and we even told him how Chase sexually assaulted me and threatened to kill me and my mom. Chase is on the sex offenders list now, and he will be forever. My dad saved me that day, and ever since then, he has been my true hero. My fiance and I just bought a house about six months ago that sits on about 15 acres. We have a decent amount of property. Most of it is wooded, but we plan to do something with it one day. One day, when my fiance Tony was out running errands, I decided I wanted to take the dirt bike out back through the trails and do some exploring. After all, we had been living there for half of a year at this point, and we have probably only seen maybe half of our property that we owned. 
I spent about an hour just roaming around through the trails, just having fun on my bike, until I saw a person in the distance. I was 100% sure that I was still on my property, so I made my way to the man. He started waving at me as I got closer, and I waved back. Hey, Emily. Long time no see, he said. I'm sorry, I said in the most concerning way possible. Who are you? It's me, Dave. Remember biology class in high school? We used to talk. Oh, yeah. Hey. So, um, what are you doing here on my property? I asked. Oh, I'm sorry to intrude, he said. I didn't know I had a new neighbor. I live just behind you on Oak Road, which was the road directly behind my house that was parallel to the road I lived off of. I was just walking around and I must have lost track of time and went too far, he said. Sorry to bother. It's okay, no worries, I told him. Something didn't feel right about the way he was acting to me, though. It felt like he was hiding something. Just the tone of his voice and his delayed responses seemed very sketchy. Well, I better take off so I can get back home, I said. Wait, he said. Maybe we should catch up a bit. It's been so long since we have seen each other. He started walking even closer to me, but I told him that I really had to get going and that it wasn't a good time. I took off and headed back to my house. I felt really creeped out by the whole situation, and I called my fiancé when I got home so I could tell him everything that happened. Later that night, when Tony and I were watching TV like we usually did before bed every night, we were discussing the situation that happened with Dave earlier in the day. Tony reassured me that I was overthinking and being paranoid, and that he was sure it was nothing to be worried about, and that if we ever run into him again, he will tell him to heck off. It was absolutely insanely ironic, because just as Tony finished that sentence, there was a light knocking sound on our bedroom window which spooked the both of us. We both got up to see what was going on. Tony opened the blinds and then opened the window, and there he was. Dave was standing right there, looking directly at us, with what looked like to be a combat knife of some sort. Tony closed the window and locked it immediately. Then he told me to lock myself in the bathroom and he grabbed his hunting rifle and went on a search for Dave. He found him in our backyard, sprinting towards the trails, and that's when Tony let off a couple of gunshots in Dave's direction, purposely missing him, but it was to send him a message which was, if he were to ever come back, that he would shoot him where he stood. He took off, and we haven't seen him since. We debated calling the police, but we haven't. We didn't want to deal with it because we were worried that we would get into some trouble if we told the police that he shot at him, even though it was kind of in self-defense. But since he didn't try to actually physically attack us, and he didn't break in, we were worried that Tony could get charged with attempted murder or something. We didn't want to risk it, so we didn't. Tony got me my own rifle and taught me how to use it. I've been practicing my aim with it a few times a week with some targets out back in case it ever came down to a situation that I needed to use it, I would be lethal with it. We found out that he didn't even live near us and that he was stalking me on Snapchat through the Snapchat map. I'm sure most of you know, but you can literally show your location to your friends on Snapchat at all times and it will show you right where they are. I thought I had it turned on for only friends to see. Well, I guess it was public, and anyone that searched my name up that wanted to add me could potentially see my location. As soon as I found that out, I turned my location off completely, and even deleted Snapchat altogether. I don't even use it anyway, so I didn't need it on my phone. I hope we never have to hear from him again. Someone I didn't recognize added me on Snapchat one day. His name was Jason. I accepted his friend request and he started messaging me shortly after. The way he was messaging me seemed like he thought he knew me or something. So I blatantly asked him, uh, do I know you? He seemed to take offense to that when I asked him, are you kidding me? We've known each other since first grade. He redrawed my memory and I started to remember just who he was the more he explained. I slowly started to remember what he looked like and how he treated me in high school. I barely knew this guy at all though. I only knew him from when he used to pick on my friends and I. I was more of an alternative girl in high school that hung out with the weird emo kids and he was more of a popular football player. 
He used to rag on me constantly about how I dressed and used to give me a hard time about everything. As soon as I put two and two together, I blocked him, as I wasn't even going to give him the time of day unless he wanted to apologize. And even then, I probably still wouldn't have talked to him. After I blocked him, I went on throughout my day and eventually I found myself on this dating app that I was using at the time to make new friends. I saw a new message from somebody named Brandon. He was very handsome and he wasn't being gross, only friendly. He seemed really funny, so I gave him a chance. We started talking about our hobbies and what we were both interested in, and tons of other things. It seemed like we were clicking, so when he asked me out on a date, I said yes. He asked if I could meet him at Olive Garden later that night, but I told him I was busy unfortunately and that we would have to do it sometime this weekend. We both agreed that Saturday night would work. I gave him my number and we talked all week, all day, every day. I was actually really growing to like him and I enjoyed talking to him. It was about 8.30 p.m. when we met at Olive Garden that Saturday. He told me he was running late so I waited for him at the table the waitress sat me at. He showed up about 5-10 to 10 minutes later and he apologized greatly. Now before I say anything else, real quick, I just want to say that when that guy at the beginning of the story, Jason was messaging me, he never sent me a picture of him. I vaguely remembered what he looked like from high school, but it had been 5 years since I seen him so he could look completely different for all I knew. As soon as I saw Brandon though, my stomach turned, because he looked nothing like the guy in the pictures. I wasn't sure if I was just overthinking or not, so I decided to not say anything. He had the same style and color of hair, and the same color of eyes, but other than that he looked completely different. I've met people that look nothing like their pictures though, and it actually turned out to be them, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt before causing a big scene. He excused himself to the restroom after we ordered our food. I took the time I had to look at his pictures once more on the dating app, and as I scrolled through all of his pictures, I realized that he most definitely was not the person I thought I was talking to, and that he was 100% catfishing me. I felt sick to my stomach as soon as I came to that realization. Nonetheless, I got up and quickly walked to my car. I blocked him immediately on both the dating app and from my phone number. I put two and two together and I couldn't believe that this was happening to me. The guy catfishing me was Jason, the guy who I blocked on Snapchat and who bullied me all throughout high school. I went home and tried my best to forget about it and I thought that was going to be the end of it. Well, it turns out I was wrong. About a week later, he showed up to my house. Yes, I said my house. I have no idea still to this day how he found my address. This man was legit stalking me. I don't have a peephole on my door, so when I heard someone knocking on my door, I just opened it. It was broad daylight and I live in a nice neighborhood where everyone keeps an eye on things, so I wasn't as cautious as I should have been, I guess. I was absolutely blown away when I saw Jason standing there. As soon as I opened the door, he pushed his way through me and let himself in. That's when I began yelling at him and telling him to get the hell out of my house. He got very angry with me very quickly and grabbed me by my arms, threw me on the couch and started choking me. He was screaming at me and asking me why I wouldn't give him a chance. After a few seconds of that, I don't know what made him stop, but I'm glad he did. I genuinely thought he was going to kill me. He ran out of the house and took off. I called the police on him and they tracked him down and arrested him. I heard he was let out on bond though. I have a restraining order against him now though too, and he knows it, so if he ever comes near me again, he'll be going straight to jail.